Hey everyone, welcome back to Zero's Hobbies, and thanks again for stopping by. Um, this uh, this hobby vlog uh, has taken me a really long time to film uh, because I had to take a break uh, for a couple months, more than a couple, but I had to take a break uh, due to medical situation. Um, but I'm back and. We're here and I got as much in this video as I could for the stuff that I had gotten done uh, before I took my break and a little bit after, not too much, but um, you'll see. I mean, I tried to keep busy. You know me, I'm always trying to do something. Um, but yeah, here we go. Um, I'll let you guys see the video and you guys hope you enjoy uh, as much as I enjoy making them. Um, and then we'll talk to you guys at the end. All right, sit tight. All right, everybody. So I decided to reprime the DACA jet. It was gray when it came to me. I bought it used. But it was all gray, so I had some Vallejo silver left from doing uh, those guys. So I primed them up, got it all, I got them all. Just covered up the windshield and the orc so I could do that separately. And then I decided to stripe it up. <clears throat> so, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. So I striped it up, and I'm gonna do like red red a little bit of red here the wing and then the nose is going to be all red this whole plate here and you know, i'm just going to follow the lines um and i might do something with the wing or the tail probably a stripe there because i want it to look like they used to paint our uh sabers uh, u.s saber jet uh one of my buddies uh miguel he, we were talking and I was like, man, I don't know what to do with this thing. And he's like, you know what it kind of looks like? And then he showed me a picture. I'm like, yep, that's it. So thank you, Miguel, for the uh, awesome idea. And then I am working on this bad boy. This big old thing. I got the legs positioned. I got them on a base, uh, one of my paint pots, because it's, you know, not that he can he can stand on his legs, but I want to get them done before I do much more. You know, and I, I, I need a base for him, and it's like 90 mil, 190 millimeter base for this guy because of his legs. You know, you got to have them somewhere. Otherwise, they're just going to break off, and I don't want to have to keep regluing. So I had to cut. These ball sockets were positioned back here on the arms so if you see like if I would have put it the way it was supposed to be his arm would be because the sockets down there so his arm would be pretty much like this almost like another foot which is, is fine but I didn't want that I wanted his arms to be like like this like one of them is going to be down you know and then the other one will be part way up because if you look it's this one's got like chainsaw blades uh on its claws for its claws i guess and it does it it's got little hinges so i'm assuming it, it pinches <laughs> um but yeah i'm gonna get those pinned in and then i gotta get some uh epoxy sculpt and get some putty and clean that up because I, it's held in by a pin right now and it's glued pretty good but I don't want it to snap and I got to finally got a use for that giant skull you get in the Citadel skull pack um, because I guess there was one of these in the epic scale game that originally came out the space the first space marine game uh, or the first version of 40k which was little tiny tiny guys there was a version of this where it had wheels instead of treads or legs had a Gatling gun here and a Gatling gun here. It had a big skull here and a little skull here. So I am going to get a little skull up here just to kind of pay homage to the original uh, Brass Scorpion. 
but that's what we're working on right now um so i'm gonna try and get some paint on that guy there i think I'm, i was really debating on um sponging which i might just do again it's gonna take me a while but i think the sponging was such a cool technique and effect it gave it such a like it gave it texture which this this paint is so smooth you know like like super super smooth so giving it a little texture will be nice so i'll sponge on the dark red then i'll sponge on the light red and then i might even go lighter just a little bit i might even do checkers on there i might make just like a paper stencil and tape it down and just do uh checkers but i'll do the red first sponged and then i'll sponge on the yellow checkers if i do checkers if i do checkers because i still want to get one more but i probably will get the bomber uh just to have two different vehicles and i know i know that in this game the these guys suck like they're they all they have is shooting and they orcs can't shoot so you're probably gonna miss a lot but they say you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take so it's something but yeah that's it that's what we're working on right now all right guys see you in a little bit all right so i just yeah I, you guys i'm sure you remember this guy um i started on the other one that i got the resin one from my buddy ed and i got him primed zandri dust uh over the weekend uh last weekend because He's, um, I just had, I had Xandru Dust and I, you know, I figured big old skull part, I might as well, you know, but I'm going to paint this one up, uh, like the Dark Angels, obviously, it's going to be a Dark Angel helmet and I'm going to do, you know, I'll try to do the same. It's cool. Cause you can actually see, this is an FDM print. You can see the texture lines really good, but you can still see them almost none you see here you can see it around the skull eyes you can see a little bit right here i should have sanded it more so yeah never mind you can still see it it's smoother there is is a lot smoother than this one you see like can you see how all you see all those lines there's less here but you can still see them not as much though but yeah we're gonna paint this guy up like a dark angel and it's gonna once it's done it's gonna go to my buddy rob um because he plays dark he's got like the biggest dark angel army i've ever seen um i mean i'm sure there's somebody out there with a bigger one but no his his army is huge and i do have a video on it from a couple years ago and since then he has added so many more primaris uh, miniatures and and new tanks and stuff so yeah his his army's pretty big but uh yeah there you go we're gonna keep working on that guy i think i'll do the detail in the armor like maybe some edge highlighting detail up you know like the, the, the bulk of metal parts and then and then i'm gonna do both at the same time i'm gonna weather the both of them at the same time so i'm gonna use the sponge to do to start the scratching marks and then we'll do the sponge with the metallic color to give it more of a worn worn out look like it's been sitting forever so yeah we'll see you in a little bit all right so had a little more progress on the buggies or the bigger buggies um i gave this my uh reichland flesh shade at or shade shade <laughs> and then i hit it with um not no oil but the uh pro acryl yeah with the uh pro acryl black wash um so you can see it's pretty dark then i got the truck finally i still got the other parts to do um yeah, I got the stripes on there, but I'm gonna um, gotta bring those back up, obviously. And I started on the Batmobile, uh, just coloring some of the lighter areas. Um, these are gonna be like brighter. 
than the rest of the car. The car is going to be pretty much black. Um, I got to do those bolt guns or the shooters. Sorry. You got to do those. Looks like I did them. So not too bad. Also, uh, got the stripes on. Um, did a tiny little bit of wash on the boosters and hopefully tomorrow I can get another because I'm going to put another coat of wash on them get them really dark and then I'm going to dry brush them back up to like um, lead belcher or something like that like a dark metal but I really like the way the stripes came out uh, I was just kind of giving a little nod to the uh, American Sabre Jet. It looks kind of kind of looks kind of showy, cartoony right now. But once I get it all dirty and washed up, it's going to look a lot better. So, yep, and it's going to tie in much closer to the rest of the to the rest of the army, you know. So it's bright now, but it's going to get all dirtied up, and it's a couple coats of wash. But there you go. Still working on them. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. All right. So I'm finally working on the um, Kill Team box set. I'm working on the boys, of course. I still have the Imperial Guard to do, but I'm getting there. I'm almost done with the boys. Uh, I'm going to clean up some of the scenery. I got some special bases I want to put them on. I think they're Sector Imperialis bases. Uh, so they're pretty cool. I had some extra. I'm not sure where I got them from, uh, but I had like 10 extra. So I think I must've been trying to do something with someone else. Maybe, hmm, I don't know. I think it was like Necromunda or something, but I got rid of the models, but I got the bases. So yeah, I, I, I got 10 bases, not enough for the, the goblin, or the Gretchen and the uh, Squig Bomb, but it's cool. The boys will have cool bases. Um, I might get some more. I don't know, because I really want one for Snake Rot. So we'll see. But yeah, there we go. Some boys getting done. I'll see you in a bit. All right, I wanted to share this really quick about the Commandos, uh, Orc Commandos team uh, for Kill Team. So just because they're monopose doesn't mean that they're really bad kits. This kit, here's the Goblin's uh, crossbow or grappling hook. And you can see that tiny little hook piece has to get glued on. So you just got to be careful when cutting that out. Um, I just twisted it and it came right out. But just be careful when you're taking that out. It's a tiny little piece. All right, be back. All right, all right, all right, all right. The commandos are done. Well, they're built. Um, I want to put on a couple little extras like the little pouches and stuff like that. I'm gonna put them on there. I mean, I know it's just more crap to paint, but who cares? They look they look cool. I love the way they came out. Um, they're very finicky while wow, putting something together. Like the communications guy, that that cable is in three pieces, so you, or two pieces, so you got to be very careful. You got to glue it here, here, and then you got to glue the arm in place. So it's real tricky. A um, couple of things are. So just be careful. Follow the instructions. Take your time. Just be patient. If you get frustrated, just put the stuff down. Because the biggest thing for me was that on the sprues, each model had one or two parts on each sprue. Which I, I just didn't understand. I was like, that just doesn't make sense. But, I mean, whatever. It's King's Workshop. But, like, for example, this guy, there was three pieces. Just like the one, two, three. And this guy, to get him to put together... His parts were spread out between the three, which it just, like I said, just didn't make sense to me. And I was like, you know what? It's orky. It's chaos. Whatever. Who cares? But yeah, just take your time. Find your pieces. Be very careful which pieces go where because they're, they're all, even though you have options, it's still a monopose model. Like all these guys with the special weapons, they could have all been regular commandos. So they could have been like a, a, a slasher boy or a commando boy. They could have just been plain dudes. Or you're swapping out the weapons. But the pose is still the same. The arms only go on one way. The heads only go on one way. 
the legs, you know, there's some torsos with the legs attached and there's some torsos where you got to add one leg. So like I said, they're all monopose, all of them. They just have a like ton of bits. Like this guy has like so many little bits on him for just a squig bomb. Same thing with the, the grot. Well, actually the grot has less parts than the squig, but like I said, there, there's a ton of parts on these guys. So take your time, pay attention to the directions and good luck. Okay, so back with the kill team and I've got the Imperials built. I um I don't have them glued to the base because I'm gonna try and do something special. But excuse me. Whew. I um it's late. So I built a sniper veteran. I built a bruiser veteran. I built the sergeant veteran, built a hardened veteran, the comms veteran, we built the medic veteran with the little medic bag, we've got a gunner veteran, another gunner vet, three gunner veterans, and then a regular trooper, a trooper veteran. <laughs> um, there's definitely options in this kit to build all a lot of troopers if you just wanted to build regular troopers um, but I decided to go for the gunners because well I don't know how many you're supposed to not have so <laughs> I figured if anything I'll get another set and rebuild a bunch of guys as troopers so I can fill out two squads uh, they're very cool um, very detailed they're very tiny compared to like space marines and orcs and you um you don't really notice that until you get into them you get into the building and like you start seeing all the tiny tiny little bits that they have all over them i built the sergeant with a saber and the plasma pistol i don't know as i thought it was a cool combo and um if I do build another squad, I'll do the chain sword and the bolt pistol. There's a hardened veteran. He's got like some kind of claw, like a power claw. Oh, I gotta get that little bit of flashing off there. You see it? Right there. We'll get that off in a bit. And we've got the comm specialist. He's looking at a chart or maps. He's got a little pistol. I think that's like a smoke grenade pistol or something like a flare gun. And it's got a rifle. It's got the communications backpack. Extra pouch. And like I said, I got them right now. I got them sticky tacked. But they seem to keep falling over. And then we've got the regular vet veteran trooper. Very cool running pose. I like their old style rifles and I had added the bayonet, although I know that's going to snap off eventually. It's a really cool little thing, but it's going to snap. We've got the gunner veteran with a flamethrower. And he's got a special flamethrower backpack. Which is cool. We've got another gunner with a grenade launcher. I love it. He's got it cracked open. It's like a blooper. He's got some grenades there. I don't have anything else in the backpack, but I can glue more stuff to the backpack. Which I'm going to eventually. Another gunner with a plasma gun. Because I feel like I don't know, it was either a Melta or a Plasma, and I don't know, I just felt the Plasma. If I don't overcharge it, it's pretty reliable. And then we've got the Medical Specialist, or the Veteran. No idea what that is on his arm. Kind of interesting though that they used a, a crouching guy 
So it was either this guy or a demolitions guy. And I really would have liked to have had a demolitions guy in the team as well. But then the other crouching, the only other crouching legs were the sniper specialist. Yeah, it was actually no, it was this guy or the demolition guy. And I was I chose the demolition guy. See that? You gotta sand that down. Then here's the little medical pouch. Which is really interesting because it's only cracked a bit, so it's really hard to like read what's in there. It's supposed to stand up, but it dried and then got a little shovel. Put a little shovel there because it's dug in the ground. So I was like, yeah, as well. And here are some of the added accessories you can put on their backpacks, which I'm going to like. They've got little canteens. Some have little cups, you know, very cool. They've got hammers or pickaxes, shovels. I don't know what that is. It looks like a medical instrument. Bunch of little stuff. There's also grenades like tons and tons and tons of grenades i can put on here all right so and pouches a ton of pouches as well so like i said excuse me they're very there's a lot of variety in this uh this squad this is a nice kick this is a nice kill team you know and like i said you can buy two of them and you can build you know more of the regular guys and the guys you didn't get to build like the demolitions guy and you could, you know, give them all these little cool accessories to make them look different or whatever. Uh, but in the end, you'll have two full squads of Death Corps of Krieg for your Imperial Guard Army or Astra Militarum. But there you go. They're done. So are the orcs. I just, well, they're semi-done. I got to do the bases or get different bases. And I got to put on all these little accessories. You know, little bits and bobs. Those are two little canteens a little pouch with grenades attached so just little things that just kind of give them a little bit more you know which is kind of cool and a lot of people don't do that because they're like well it's more it's more to paint and they don't want to paint that stuff but for me it's like yeah throw it on there who cares get some paint on there do the best you can it is what it is but all right guys we'll see you in the next one hey guys all right so <clears throat> we got some wash on the plane. This is two coats of my Agrasur shade and Rikon Flush shade mix. And one coat of the Pro Acryl black wash. Same thing for this guy. Although he's going to get a bunch of black paint. I did want to cover up some of the bare, where I'm going to leave bare metal. And I even did the back. And I did everything just one more time with... Two coats of the Reichland slash Agrass shade, and then one coat of the Pro Curl Black. Just a heads up though, for this paint, it has two means of use. You can take off the whole cap and just pour it into your feeder, or you can twist this up, and it'll be a, a pour bottle, just like the um, Army Painters and stuff. But it is wash, so when you tip it to, to pour it, don't bring it back up and close the top because you're going to get a spit of, of ink or wash. So what you do is hold it, don't squeeze it, just close it while you're holding it upside down. And you'll get the last drop, but you'll still have to have a paper towel or tissue to wipe off that tip because it's going to be soaked with the, with the wash. And you'll be losing a lot of wash that way. But that's just a quick heads up. I just wanted to show you guys real quick where we're at. And you can see that wash really darkened up the red. I don't know why it's not focusing. But it did it with the wings too. See, it got them real nice and dark. Which is cool because I'm going to sponge this color back on, this red. And then I'm going to sponge on a higher red just to get a little bit of spots. And I'm going to be sponging on a lot of other colors just to get some variation in the wings. And, the, you know, because this really shows the red in the wash, you know. And I'll paint the bombs and the rockets. I'll paint the rockets just like I paint the rockets on the uh, on that one over there. And on this one, just to kind of like 
have some kind of tie-in. This guy's got rockets here, and he's got a mirror. So we'll see. We're going to keep on going. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, um, I just wanted to show you. I picked up some of the Vallejo Diorama Fix um, ground texture. It's supposed to be rough ground. This is like an old sticker. But yeah, it's supposed to be rough ground. So I want to just try it really quick on these three bases. Um, no paint on the base. Um, just plain bases. This one has some grooblies on it that I glued on. This is a resin base. This is a plastic one that I'm going to try and stick some of these little grooblies on from a sprue once the paste is on. And then this one is just cork that I'm building for a, a single miniature. So... I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. Um, this stuff is pretty, pretty group, goopy. Goopy, goopy is a good word for it. Look at that. You know, it sticks to everything. You can definitely feel it's grainy. So it's definitely got like some kind of sand in it. I'm just getting it all over myself. Okay. So yeah, it's definitely got texture in it. I'm supposed to be pretty tacky too, so it's supposed to have like some kind of PVA in it and resin. So which which is what makes it stick to everything. And it's light gray pumice. Or just, I don't know, just crown texture, I guess. I don't know. But uh, it's supposed to be, you, you're you supposed to be able to paint over it once it's dry and mix it. If you've got a, like a high pigment, thin paint, like a ink or a contrast, you should be able to mix it. So I'll try those next time. Maybe I'll do a whole video on messing with these texture paints and see what I like and it's definitely tacky. Let's see if I get a little more on there. Because I want to... Yeah, it feels like there's some kind of coating on my hand now. I apologize if I'm off camera, guys. It's hard to see. So I think you're supposed to be able to like like layer it once it dries. You should be able to put on. See, I got like a peak there. It should stay there, and it should get pretty hard. So let's. That one went in upside down, of course. Alright, I know I'll leave that to dry. Now... Ugh, my fingers are full of super glue. I just tried to super glue this stuff down and it just became, of course, the bottle spills all over my fingers and not where I want it to go. But that's, that's super glue, right? That's what it does. It's supposed to aggravate the shit out of you. Excuse my French. Gonna... 
This stuff is really, really tacky. Really messy, too. Come on. So this feels like it's probably better to do your base, then put your mini on it kind of thing. Maybe even wear gloves. <laughs> Just a little bit on here. A little bit more than that. Let's see if it works on cork, too. It should. According to the uh, YouTube channels that promote this stuff. You know, even according to AK Interactive, it should. According to the bottle, it should adhere pretty well. See, it's sticking to the, um, to this thing. So not really. And this is just me looking for simple alternatives to, um, using sand and glue and, you know, or sand and PVA and all that other good stuff. Let's see. We'll leave that like that. And we'll leave all three to dry. And I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. Alright. So. I started this at midnight. Uh, with this Vallejo Diorama FX. Um, it's now 6.30 in the morning. This still hasn't dried completely because you can push down on it a little bit. You can see the edges though, they kind of, it dried a bit clear. And it did on the other two as well. <laughs> so yeah, this one, it's still a little tacky too, down where the bumpy parts are. Yeah, still a little, like I can push down on it. This one you can see dried almost clear on certain spots. That's probably why they tell you to add pigment to it. Yeah, see? It dried, that thin stuff dried almost instantly clear and shiny. And this stuff is still, yeah, still tacky as well. So, we'll wait. 
we'll wait and see how long it takes for that to dry. Um, not looking too good. I don't like... If this takes this long and it's this hard to work with because it's all sticky and tacky, I could just use sand and glue. And that's the, that defeats the purpose of this stuff. Like, this is supposed to be quicker, you know, and quicker drying. Like, it'll tell you. Let me see. Oof. It is tiny. Yeah, you can't read that. Dang it. I know it says on here somewhere it should take about 45 minutes. But yeah. If it if it's taking overnight and the texture isn't anything special, then I should just I can just use sand and glue PVA, which is a far more affordable option. I just bought a seven pound bag of sand for seven, eight bucks free shipping from Amazon. And how much is a bottle of glue? You know, this is this was 20 or almost 20. And it's a big bottle. You can, you, you can see it's a huge bottle, you know, compared to this stuff. Although I think I can get this in a bigger bottle. But nonetheless, this is an instant product. Like you lay it down, that's the color it comes in. That's the effect it has, you know. Those little tiny crackles, if you do it right. This is just sand and resin and glue. No color. And it's clear sand. So, yeah, I could just, I could just use sand and glue. It's probably better off. No. Good to know. I mean, at the very least, this stuff, as much as I didn't like it, at least it it does have a base color. And like I said, you can see it's glow it's it's drying like super clear and shiny. I mean if it's what you have, it's what you have. It's fine. I wouldn't seek it out though. Yeah, you see this stuff still gummy still like it's not sticky anymore but it's like you know malleable all right here we go all right so i let this stuff sit uh more than 24 hours and some of it's really really hard and some of it's still kind of gummy like where it's thick it's still gummy but see like right there i can put my nail in there but the rest of it's pretty hard stuff on here almost dried almost clear except for right here see my nail went in there and it kind of look it's like kind of coming back to shape not by much though pretty solid it's like rubbery almost it's like how sticky it is so i mean the result can be worked with and obviously you can paint over the whole base which is what i usually do i'll paint the whole base or you can paint the pig you know you can put some um color into the mix if you wanted to do that extra step I personally don't think that's necessary unless you just want to just slap this stuff on and that be that you know what I mean? That like that be your color. That's fine. That's if that's how you do it. That's totally fine. I personally like to just paint the whole like prime the whole base once it's done. But um, this Vallejo diorama effects. Hmm. I I I know. Okay, so. The end result of this, or not even the end result, but where you, I apologize, my light is like going out here. Um, what you get out of this, right, just scooping this out and slapping it on a base. You're, 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 all you're doing is eliminating a couple steps 
with the original with the old school process which is lay some glue down lay some sand down let it dry same thing you're going to get the same results uh the sand may not be as stuck like the pva glue if you're using pva or or regular glue or elmer's glue if you're using that stuff it may not stay like just sand and glue won't stay on these bases especially these games workshop bases they it eventually just chips right off if it falls you know it'll chip right off this stuff doesn't it's pretty tough i'll give it that so it it, it, it it's gonna stick around right like it's gonna stay it's it's doing what it's meant to do um it's doing what they claim it does you know um, you should be able to layer it from what they say. So now that this is dry, I should be able to take another scoop and start layering to get some more height. Right. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do that. I don't personally want to right now. I don't need, feel the need to, but it's, it's interesting that you can do it. So, okay. For me, in the amount of time I've spent basing models and putting things together and doing things like that and hobbying and crafting and all that stuff. I don't see much value in this over Elmer's glue and sand, but like with the Elmer's glue, once you put it down, you have to put another thin water down layer over all of it so that it seals it all in and it makes it tougher. So yeah, there's more steps. This is less steps. And this did like, so on this base, I super glued those bits down. Because this is a resin, cheap resin base. And I super glued those plastic bits down. On this one, I didn't. I just stuck them into the material. They're in there. They're in there just as good as, as these guys. They're not coming out. Neither of these. So it's got a really strong bond and adhesive. So it's cool. You know what I mean? It, 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 it. And at first I was very... <clears throat> I'm still kind of on the fence about it. So for me, the purchase was not as valuable, I think. But if you're just looking to get some quick basing done, it's not too bad. I'm going to give this a okay. You know what I mean? This is, this, this is, man, I don't want to say two thumbs up. I'm, I'm just going to say I'll give it one thumbs up, right? Like we'll give it two out of four tacos. You know what I mean? Because um, it works. It does what it says it's supposed to do. It just takes a really, really, really long time for it to cure. I personally don't like that. I, I, you know, Elmer's glue takes better, you know, a couple hours. No, no, you know, it is what it is. Like, this claims 45 minutes somewhere. But that's not accurate. Like I said, it's been over 24 hours. Well over. And it's still, like, gummy in some spots. So... <clears throat> just plan ahead if you do pick this up plan ahead plan your projects carefully you know what i mean or have something else to go to once you're done putting all the stuff on here and just let it sit and go away from it you know what i mean like just for you know paste it and forget about it and you should be fine but like i said in my opinion my opinion don't there's no need to dye this or color this if you want you can just prime it whatever you're going to prime it and then go from there you know, I mean, if you're if you're if you feel like wasting cups and uh, stirring sticks or whatever you use to mix stuff, go ahead, go for it, knock your socks off. But like I said, for me personally, it's like, eh, I'm just gonna prime the whole base anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um, we're gonna do some more with this. We're gonna we're gonna uh, me. I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try some more things with this, uh, and see whether or not. It was worth the twenty dollars because, yeah, it's twenty bucks. Or I, I think. Hold on a second. I might be wrong. It might not be twenty bucks. Okay, so I checked, and this was uh, twelve bucks. So twelve bucks for this big container. Okay, so that makes it a lot more valuable, and I totally mix that up but yeah 12 bucks from amazon uh, it's a good deal if you're like i said if you're just looking to have something quick 
that you don't have to do your own glue. And like I said, this glue is so much stronger that's in here. I think it's like a resin-based glue. So uh, it's so much stronger than Elmer's. So right now it gets a thumb, it still gets a thumbs up. We're gonna work with more things with it. We're gonna do try other stuff with it. Um, and I just, <laughs> I just bought this with a seven pound bag of sand. I, I ordered a seven pound bag of sand because I was running out of sand and I was like, all right, I need some play sand. And I don't want to spend like $30 on a big 50 pound bag because I don't need 50 pounds of sand. So I just got a little seven pound bag and the bag came busted in the box. So I lost a little bit because there was a bunch of sand that I had to sift through and it was all over the floor and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, this is not terrible. It's just not, for, it's not, I'm not, it's so tacky putting it on. I'm not a fan of it. I apologize for the camera shaking my hand. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, we'll try some more projects. I'm going to actually try it on something bigger because it's supposed to be for dioramas. So let's see how that works. Like if I just use this for basing, I'm going to have, this is going to be around for a while until it probably, it will probably dry out before I get to use it all. Um, but we'll see. But there you go, man. That's the Vallejo Diorama FX ground texture. It does it this and, and one thing is really funny. This is not the bottle that I was looking at when I ordered. When I even when I go back to my order, the picture that they have with it's a whole it's a different the newer bottles with the, the label completely different, has completely different description, and like this is supposed to be multicolored. And they don't. I mean, I guess it is. And this is just a light gray base. And this is a black base. I don't know. I don't know if that's multicolored, but you know, whatever. That's that's what they sent me. Might be wrong, but that's what they sent me. All right, <laughs> let's get on to the next project. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, everybody, real quick, I just wanted to show you. My wife picked up the box of uh, Kill Team Justian uh, from Target. It's like a Target exclusive. Um, it's pretty expensive for eight guys, but it is a Kill Team, and it does come with the Kill Team data cards. So we can... Uh, I'm not going to do a normal video with these and unboxing like I normally do, um, just because there's a ton of them out there and i know exactly what miniatures come in this it's all seven of them plus the one extra in intercessor so what i'll do is i'll just open these up and get them out so you guys can see what they look like and then i'll build them and then we'll go from there all right sit tight all right here we go this is all eight models um this one is the double it's the standard uh intercessor but the nice thing is It comes with two different heads, one with a helmet, one without. So you can technically make two different <laughs> intercessors. There you go. And I'll get them all built and then we'll go over all the little details. It's a type. All right, so here they are. The uh, Warhammer Heroes uh, Justian Strike Force. And this is Captain Justian. Very detailed. I, I like these hero models because they come with these really cool uh, detailed bases. And then we've got the heavy intercessor with a heavy bolter. I bored out the barrel. I don't normally do that with, with Space Marines, um, but that it's a big gun, so I figured you might as well. And then we've got the um, Eliminator with the sniper rifle. And again, each each one of these guys comes with two heads, usually a, a helmeted head and then an open head, um, as you can see right here. This is the Intercessor that you get two of. So it's really, I mean, it's bases is exactly the same, everything. I tried to move the arms on, on one just a little bit to get a different look, but, you know, it is what it is. There's the unhelmeted head. 
And there's the helmeted head. I think I'm going to take... You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Yeah, I could probably put it right there. I'm going to take the other head, the helmeted head. I'm going to trim it, and then I'm going to put it on the back of his armor there. So it looks like it's hanging off. Here's his Assault Intercessor. And they all have names, but I'm not really worried about that right now. I just kind of wanted to get them together and trying to help decide, trying to decide what chapter to make these guys. Um, you can't really use them in a straight up army, which kind of sucks. This is the sergeant. But, you know, I mean, it still should be some kind of chapter, right? Like... And here's another intercessor with a me mechanical hand throwing a grenade. And that's kind of cool, you know. Um, he's got a couple of them. But in the game, you can only use it once. And it provides, like, cover, like smoke. So it's kind of cool, but I don't know. I feel like... So you've got one, two... Three, four, four standard intercessors, right? Like you can, these, these guys can be just straight up intercessors. You can put them in a squad of intercessors as long as they're, you know, you know what weapons they're carrying. These two are carrying the standard bolt rifle. These two are carrying the assault bolt rifle. And this guy is an assault intercessor, so he really won't work in that squad. And neither will these guys, but... Or, no, you can't because his armor, this guy's armor is different. Heavy intercessors, I was thinking, oh, okay, they carry heavy weapons. But they, they're not, no, it's, you get one per five guys. The, the point of the heavier armor is to give them a really high toughness. I want to say they're toughness six in the game, which is really, that's, that's, that's better than some death guard. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but yeah, there you go. That's the kill team Justian. So, like I said, I'm going to sort out what army color I'm going to give them. I decided that all my kill teams are going to be uh, based with uh, Martian bases, like uh, orangey, reddish bases, kind of like I'm doing with the orcs. So that's going to that's gonna be the primary color of the bases. So i got to figure out a color that, you know, doesn't clash with it, but is complementary to it. So... I don't know, maybe raptors, um, but raptors can be in any color, like, their primary color is green, right, they use that drab green, because a lot of them, they have a vanguard force mainly, but they could be brown too, they could be tan, they could be, you know, uh, gray, they could be whatever color they need for the environment that they're in, right, that's the one thing about the raptors that is different from every other chapter, like, ultramarines always wear blue, regardless of where they are. Same thing with Imperial Fist, Space Wolves, they all wear the same color no matter where they are. But the Raptors have been known to change colors. They use camouflage, you know what I mean? They they do this to, to better suit the environment they're in. So we'll see. We'll see what I do. All right. See you guys in a bit. All right. So there you go, man. Um, as you can see, I tried to get as much painting on my orcs done as possible. Um, did some more stuff with the basing. But... You know, we're still working on that kind of stuff. I'm still experimenting with stuff like that. Um, and I got that kill team going, which is kind of cool. I mean, I wouldn't have purchased that on my own. Uh, my wife bought that for me, but nonetheless, you know what I mean? I'm not going to let it go to waste. We're going to use it, and we're going to do what we can with it. I wouldn't recommend buying that um, unless you really want those cards. You could put that kill team together with stuff you may or may or you know have already like there's four intercessors there's a captain you know the heavy bolter or heavy intercessor the assault intercessor and the eliminator are kind of like eh, you, unless you have those squads it might not be worth it but like i said you could you could build that without buying this box set but that's up to you i mean everybody's gonna do what they do you know what i'm saying it was fun putting them together i like the miniatures um 
Not sure what I'm going to do with them paint-wise. Probably Raptors. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I know one thing. I got to get them done before zero or CZCon <laughs> in September. So, because I want to take them so that people have an army to play if they want to try uh, Kill Team. But there you go. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Uh, for those of you who just subscribed, and there was a couple of you since I've been gone, I want to thank you very much for jumping on with me. Um, hopefully, I'm not going to say hopefully. I'm going to just say it. I, I'm going to start getting off my butt and try and make more videos. Um, maybe some more tutorials uh, in my hobby vlogs. Kind of like how I've learned to do stuff. You know what I mean? And maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll figure it out together. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. We're not going to stop. So thanks for sticking with me. All right, guys. We'll see you soon.